Bacteria are everywhere. Some of these tiny creatures make us sick, some keep us healthy, and sometimes they're used to make art. Quinesia Fraser shows us how millions of microorganisms growing in petri dishes are bringing art and science closer together. When people come in from outside of the lab and we show them what we're doing here, we usually have to say it a few times. Tara Rhoda may look like a scientist. So if I wanted to add texture, but she's actually an artist. As they approach the light box, and I introduce the concept of painting with bacteria and mention that the bacteria is E. coli, all of a sudden the group that's approached immediately <laughs> retracts. And it happens every time. She manages the bio art lab at the School of Visual Arts in New York. I kind of ease them back in and assure them um, that it's not the kind that they've heard about in the news. Um, it's not the kind that can make them sick. Right. This is what's called agar art, bacteria painted on agar, the jelly-like substance used in petri dishes. And it's clear, it's transparent, and rather than immediately being able to see our art, we have to wait for it to grow. The E. coli used here are genetically modified for safety and to produce colorful pigments. Some even glow in the dark. Agar art has also started spreading on social media. The Instagram account Petri Dish Picasso gives new meaning to popular culture. We got a lot of people that said, ew, what are you doing? This is awful. You're going to create the next superbug. Courtney Toth is one of Petri Dish Picasso's many contributors. It's not just about the bacteria being pretty. It's about telling a story behind that Petri dish. Another agar artist who's taken to Instagram is Melissa Palmer. She runs Microbial Muse. I also really, really like the imagery of using lots of really small microbes to show the beauty of big nature, like mountains and lakes and landscapes. And now, agar artists so are bringing their best from, dishes like, to the competitive table. The American Society for Microbiology runs an annual agar art contest that started in 2015. The general public really doesn't think about uh, microorganisms unless they're thinking about disease. Catherine Lontok represents the organization. And it's actually only about 1% of bacteria cause disease in humans. Bacteria do a lot of things for us that are good. But you don't have to be an expert to explore agar art. Thanks to public workshops, people of all ages and backgrounds can make their very own microbial masterpieces. This is GenSpace in Brooklyn, the world's first community biology lab. We have Lots of different strains that have different colors. They all Daniel Grushkin runs GenSpace. Uh, people from all walks of life have walked in here and got in the lab, put on their lab gloves, and painted sometimes their first, first portrait using a living organism. It's fun. I mean, it's enjoyable. Something as simple as drawing is a great way to draw the public in. There you go. You need okay. it. Ooh, that's Dip exciting. It. Quinesia Fraser, CBS News, New York. From famous figures to flowers, this blooming craft is inspiring people to see both science and art in a different light. Thanks for joining us. I'm Miguel Octavio with CBS This Morning.